Okay, so this video we're going to discuss viral replication following the lysogenic cycle. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so when we get into the steps of the lysogenic cycle, we can really break it down into five stages. And we're going to call the first one the attachment stage. And like the name implies, the virus will land on the cell membrane of the host. So here comes the virus. Notice how there are these little objects marked receptors on the cell membrane. The virus itself has these little bumps and little balls of protein on the outer surface. So the virus will, act, will actually attach to these receptors. You know, the lock and key analogy works really well here. The virus has these little uh, bumps of proteins on them, and if they are able to match the receptor of the cell, then the attachment is successful. So when we move on into the second stage of the lysogenic cycle, that's called entry. Like the name implies, the nucleic acid, the genetic material, the DNA or the RNA of the virus is going to enter the host cell. This happens usually in a, one of two ways. One is that the nucleic acid is literally injected into the host cell. This animation, however, is going to follow the other way. And that is, and that is that the virus, the entire virus, is swallowed into the cell. Notice how an indentation has begun. More and more and more of the virus is being taken into the host. And eventually, the entire virus has been taken into the host cell. So what happens next are enzymes inside the virus will cause the capsid to break down. This releases the nucleic acid into the cytoplasm of the host. Well, what actually happens next is that viral DNA will actually uh, be spliced into and combined with the DNA of the host cell. So watch this. Enzymes will actually break open the host cell's genome and, there, and that allows the viral DNA to bond with and fuse with the host cell DNA. This combination of part cell DNA in black and part virus DNA in purple is what is called a provirus. This occurs during the entry stage of the lysogenic cycle. So before we go any further, I want to zoom out for a wider view of our cell here. And what comes next is a latent time period. The provirus will enter a stage of latency. And the word latent simply means dormant. The viral DNA will lie dormant inside of the host cell. And the host cell carries on its activities as if nothing's wrong. And so the infected cell simply carries on and eventually divides by mitosis. The difference being every time the, the host cell divides, it makes a copy of the provirus. During the cell cycle of mitosis, the DNA is duplicated and then the cell begins to divide into two. Notice how there are now two infected cells when originally there was only one. So each newly created cell contains a copy of the provirus. Now this process happens over and over and over and over and might happen over and over and over for years, just depending upon the virus. So as the process happens over and over and over again, the cell on the left divides into two more infected cells. The cell on the right goes through mitosis and divides into two more infected cells for a total of four now. So the one infected cell became two, two became four, the four would continue on to eight, the eight would continue on to 16, the 16 would continue on to 32, and so on and so on and so on. Well, now let's kind of get back to the lysogenic cycle here. Let's focus on one single cell, just for simplicity. And let's zoom on into that one cell for a closer look. So stage three is called replication. Eventually, the latent period in the stage of the lysogenic cycle will end. 
the viral DNA will become active, and this kind of signifies step three of called replication. The DNA of the virus will perform DNA replication to make more DNA. And that's the definition of, of DNA replication, is the process of creating DNA from a DNA template. Remember, a template is kind of just another word for a mold. So in my animation, there's one molecule of DNA created, there's a second created, and there's a third. So multiple molecules of DNA are replicated. The DNA that was just created then undergoes transcription in order to make RNA. If you've forgotten what transcription is, it's the process of creating RNA from a DNA template. Now the difference being, the viral DNA in purple is going to be used to make viral RNA in, in, uh, in purple as well. So there's one piece of viral RNA, here's another molecule of viral RNA created, and here's another molecule of viral RNA created through the process called transcription. So now what happens next is the cell, the host cell, has ribosomes that will perform translation on behalf of the virus. The viruses don't have ribosomes themselves, so they kind of hijack ribosomes that belong to the host. So uh, the definition of translation, if you've forgotten, is the process where a ribosome will create a protein. So there's a ribosome, there's a ribosome, there's a ribosome. And through the process of translation, a bunch of amino acids are gathered and collected at the ribosome to make a protein. And notice in this case, the protein looks an awful lot like the capsid of a new virus. That's because the capsid is made, from a pro uh, is made of protein. So the same thing happens on the other piece of RNA. The process of translation occurs where the ribosome will actually gather a bunch of amino acids and build them together into, into a collection of protein. And there we see another capsid of another virus created. And one more time, here we have a ribosome collecting a bunch of amino acids. And as the amino acids are built together, into a collection uh, of protein. And here we have a third capsid created. So the process, keep in mind, we're now dealing with more than one infected cell because of that latent period when the cell went through mitosis and divided. The process also takes place inside of the other infected cells. And so we come to stage four called assembly. The viruses, the parts of the viruses that have been created will self-assemble. Here we see DNA and a capsid coming together to make a new virus. Here we see DNA and a capsid coming together to make a new virus. And finally, the third virus is created. And that leads us to step five known as release. Like the name implies, the viruses are going to be released from the host cell. And this happens in, in many cases because the virus will release enzymes that will pop little holes and poke little holes in the cell membrane of the host. This will actually cause the cell to lyse or to burst. Once that happens, those viruses are released to repeat the process. Hey, keep in mind, the process also takes place inside of the other infected body cells. So here are those four infected cells. Now, now I'm not implying that it's a ticking time bomb and all your cells are going to explode at one time. I'm not implying that at all. What I am trying to show you is that multiple cells will have their cell membranes punctured and multiple cells will burst and, and this will release multiple, a large, massive amount of new viruses. And this is the lysogenic cycle. So as we finish up, you know, pause the video if you want to try this practice quiz. And if you're in my biology class, bring me your answers before school or after school. I'd be happy to check your answers for accuracy. Good luck, everyone.